Hello, we're here today to set up a professional Twitter account, an account that can be used with potential employers, colleges, and also to communicate with the science community. So if you are in Dixon, Tennessee, you're going to set up your account uh, by clicking on the full name option, and you're going to put in the period you have my class, your first initial, and last name, and then also, again, the period you have my class. If you're not in Dixon, uh, you have the option of whatever guidelines your teacher gives you, but if you're in Kentucky, you can use your first and last name or your first initial and last name. For the email, you're going to use your school email, and in Dixon, that's going to be the year you graduate, your first initial, last name, and then at dixoncohs.org. For the password, you need to choose a password that you use on other websites or other accounts on your phone or apps. The reason for that is because it needs to be something you already know and that you'll remember. So put in your password and then click sign up for Twitter. Alright, so it's going to take you to this new screen here and it, it's going to have all the information you've already put in, but then you also need to put in your username. And for students in Dixon, it should be the same as your that you put in for your full name. Students in Kentucky, another way you might consider uh, designing your username can be demonstrated by a couple of students. Here we have Brendan Nauer. He used his first name, looks like his middle initial, last initial, and then probably the year he was born. And then Hope also, she used her first name, last name with an underscore in between. So those those are a couple suggestions you can consider when you are making your Twitter account username. So no matter what you choose for your username, you need to make sure it's something you're going to be proud of to share and use with the science community, colleges, or employers. All right, so on this screen, it's going to ask you to do a bunch of stuff. Let's go. It's going to make you choose categories and, and people to follow and stuff like that. But those are all steps you don't need to follow. All you have to do is come up to Twitter.com and get rid of the end of it. So just say Twitter.com, hit enter again, and it'll take you straight into your account. So you won't have to worry about any of those other things. The reason we skip those other steps is because the expectation is that you will follow scientists teachers and students in this class and then also students and teachers in other classes that we're collaborating with. We're not using this professional account to follow celebrities and find out what they had for breakfast. Alright, so from here we're going to go and edit our profile which includes our Twitter picture, header, and bio. And to do that you're going to click on your egg up here and wait for the drop down menu to open. You will click on your profile, then edit profile. All right, from here you're going to change your um, or add a profile photo, and you can also add in a header. Now it's important that both of these uh, represent you. Either it can be a picture of you or some or something that you're interested in, but it can't be of someone else. For instance. Here, Carly Roth has put a picture of her dog in uh, both, and then Hannah has a picture of hers with no with no header. Picture of her with no header. Both of these accounts are professional and look very good. Your bio should include information about you that makes you unique, and what you want people to know about you as you work to build your professional professional learning network. A couple examples we have include. Um, Caitlin Robinson, she says, I'm a high school student, future orthopedic surgeon, so obviously that's part of her aspirations. And then Lily Quatch also has a good one, scientifically inclined teenagers, science olympiad, and tennis. As far as location and website, you can put your state for location and please leave the, the website blank. Alright, so right here it gives you the option of choosing your first tweet, but these are both silly and ignore them. Uh, the next item of interest is going to be privacy settings. By default the settings are open and so anybody can see your tweets and it's important that we leave it that way because it makes it difficult to participate in, act in class activities on hashtags and communicating with scientists if the settings are changed to private. So when you come to security and passwords or excuse me security and privacy there's nothing here that needs to be changed. So go ahead and leave it as is so you can have full participation in class activities.
All right, a big part of using Twitter in class will be using hashtags. Now, I'm on my home screen or my timeline here, and unfortunately, it's going to give me options for people to follow. But remember, we, we're using this for professional reasons and not to keep up with celebrities. But to use hashtags, you'll have to know when to use. And one we use uh, in Kentucky and Tennessee is, is with the pound sign KY for Kentucky, TN for Tennessee, and Psi for science. And once you type that in, you're going to click search or enter. And you'll see the search has resulted in many tweets that have that have the hashtag in it. Now, when this search comes up, it's important that you click on the all button just under the search. Right here, you'll click all. Every time you do a search, you want to click all so you can see all the tweets that include that hashtag. All right, so when you click all, it'll show you every tweet that has the hashtag included in it. The hashtag is a way to make your tweets findable by other people that may not follow you. That way you can have a communication uh, with them without having to follow them or them follow you. The hashtag is also used to share resources with others in an asynchronous way. What that means is if you find a valuable resource or interesting site that you want to share, you can post it to the hashtag and other people who may not be online at that moment can see it later. So it's a great way to share information. The next thing we have is is setting up a tweet. So here's a tweet and you click on the compose button up in the upper right hand corner and you can type in whatever it is you want to share. So th and then I would click tweet to to have it go out. But I want to include the hashtag in it to make it s seeable or findable by other people who may not be following me. Uh, so I'm going to put in the hashtag pound sign KYTN Psi. And then I'm going to click tweet. And this will help it go out to the general public or anybody using that hashtag. So you can see I did send the tweet with a hashtag, but oftentimes with brand new accounts, it will not show up that same day. It also helps if you have a picture and all your profile information set up correctly, then your hashtags or your tweets are more likely to show up on the hashtag. So as you can see, I sent a tweet with my personal account to the hashtag and it showed up here. So as I mentioned earlier, you can find information shared by other people if they use the hashtag in their tweets. So I can scroll down and see tweets that have been put up by other students. Interestingly enough, this tweet right here with the anatomy uh, dissection is from a student in Kentucky. And below that are some tweets from students in, in Tennessee. We encourage you to follow students that we're collaborating with as well as scientists that we run into in our discussions. And to do that, you're going to click on the person's profile see who they are and then you can follow them by clicking the follow button when you follow somebody they will then sh their all their tweets will show up in your timeline and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second I'm gonna go ahead and follow one more here alright so you have buttons across the top of the screen here we're only going to be using the first two don't please do not use the second two we won't be using them in class so I'm going to click on the home and everybody I'm following, their tweets should show up in that place. Now I've only followed two people, so you should only see tweets from two different people. And here we go. So yes, you can see the tweet that I sent, and it, even though it didn't show up on the hashtag, and then the two people I followed, you can see their tweets here. Not only do you see the tweets of the people you follow, but you'll see tweets that they retweet or, or repost, and I'll explain that in a moment. So Morgan was one of the ones that retweeted something, and I scroll down and I can see more of her tweets as well. So your timeline, your home screen shows the people you're following and the tweets they're sending out and the retweets they share as well. Next is your notifications. Notifications is going to show you people who have sent you a tweet or have mentioned you in a tweet that they've written. So with my personal account I tweeted to this new account that we made and I said hey how are you? 
So this is part of my notifications. So I can reply to that uh, tweet by hitting the reply button, the arrow pointing to the left. I am good. And if I want to include the hashtag so more people can see the discussion as well, I can do that. I can do that too. When I finish my message, I can click tweet and then it will go back to uh, their notifications as well. Alright, so I've gone to a Twitter account called SciStuChat. It's actually a monthly chat that students, high school students and scientists have. But I'm, I've come to here to demonstrate how to use the reply even though we just showed you and also the retweet and favorite. So reply, if I wanted to comment on whatever was said, I could say, great resource. Thanks for sharing. And then send the tweet. I'm going to go ahead and put in the size 2 chat hashtag as well. And then I'm going to tweet it. That way anybody who's using the hashtag can see. And a retweet is where you repost what somebody has shared. So let's say that I really like this resource. You should always investigate the resource before you retweet it to make sure it's appropriate. No matter who's sent it out because uh, you want to know what you're resharing. Um, so let's say I clicked on that, I investigated it, and it seems like a really good resource that other people might be interested in. So I'm going to click retweet. And basically that goes out again to all my followers. So anybody who's following me will see this post. And it also goes out on the hashtag again. So more people can see it that way as well. So hashtags are incredibly powerful for sharing. Now you also have a favorite option where you can favorite a tweet. Now in Twitter, if someone favorites your tweet, that doesn't mean they liked it. It could mean that, but it doesn't always mean that. It also could be used as a bookmark, but something to use. Okay, so I've gone back to my own profile page. Uh, your profile, to get there, you click on your picture, then click on view profile, and that will take you to what you see here. Um, the last thing I need to show you is how to delete a tweet. Maybe you sent a tweet that uh, you changed your mind about what you said or you sent it on your phone and the autocorrect put a word in that you didn't want to be there. So what you're going to do is click on the three buttons here where it says more, come down to delete tweet, and then you can delete the tweet. So those are the basics for setting up an account and using Twitter. Uh, your teachers will get, be giving you more instructions and help you understand how to use it effectively with commu class communication and communication with people outside of your, of your school.